Hello everybody, welcome to video number 20 in my Richard Lehman horror novel review series and today I'm going to be talking about Richard Lehman's epic 1995 book Quake. I say epic because at 567 pages this is his longest book and let's get into it. So here's the cover art by Steve Crisp, it's very good and very relevant to the book cover art, especially this uh, blood spattered saw. Uh, the spine and here is the back which says 20 minutes before the quake hits Stanley is ogling a pretty female jogger through his living room window he ogles Sheila every morning and that's not all he would like to do to her the quake might just give him his chance when the quake hits Sheila's husband and daughter are stranded on the other side of the ruined city the power lines are down the emergency services can't cope and the evil and the lawless have already begun to comb the ruins now Clint and Barbara must make their way home to Sheila trapped naked in the bathtub in their ruined house. But will they get there before Stanley, the fat pervert for whom the earthquake is a heaven-sent opportunity? Yep, Quake. And God Almighty, where to begin talking about this one? I think uh, one way to begin is by saying that my favourite novel of all time is The Stand by Stephen King. And I guess anyone listening to this video, if, if, if you haven't read it, you at least know roughly what it's about it's about a virus which incapacitates civilization and you know over the course of 1400 something pages we get to see how uh, people and society changes as the constructs of society are removed and as you're forced to make a choice between good and evil and facing who you are inside and all those things uh, like i said i'm guessing most people have either read it or seen this mini series or know of it so I don't need to talk more about that. The only reason I mention it is because uh, Quake is kind of the same kind of thing on a much smaller scale and certainly without any of the psychological insight of King's novel. But basically it does concern an earthquake which has rendered LA uh, incapacitated. And throughout the book, we follow three groups of characters. The first group, well, it's more of a couple, is Stanley, the fat pervert, as Lehman calls him there, and uh, Sheila, who is this beautiful woman who is trapped in the ruins of her house and Stanley wants to try to get to her, to do to her what layman villains always do to beautiful women, or to any women. The second group is uh, Sheila's husband Clint, who was at work when the earthquake struck and so he now is trying to get home to her. And along the way he meets various other characters. And the third group is Sheila and Clint's daughter Barbara. She was in a driving lesson. She's 15 years old. She was in a driving lesson at the time of the earthquake, for some reason with three other students in the back seat. And uh, so she and they, the other kids, also want to now get home. All right, so in terms of story, that's really all that needs to be said, uh, because there isn't much of a story here. The earthquake strikes in the first few pages, and over the next 560 pages, everyone's just trying to get back to home base. And uh, along the way, they have various adventures, like usually happens in a Lehman book. Uh, the way to I'm going to do this review is to talk about the three strands separately. So firstly, the Stanley and Sheila part of the book. That's the least annoying to read for me, because it's standard Lehman. Uh, Stanley is the typical Lehman villain. He's sadistic and he's obsessed with rape and torture. Uh, wafer thin, obviously. There's no... Uh, kind of analysis of this type of evil he's just a he just does bad things the banality of evil personified really and but like i said it's not uh it wasn't frustrating to read in the same way that the other two strands were because some of the scenes are effective and tense and sheila is depicted as a as a strong resourceful woman who puts up a bit of a fight and so, yeah, not much to say about that part of the story. I think it's actually the shortest of the three strands. The second part of the book concerns Sheila's daughter, Barbara. Now, again, I don't really know how these things work in America, but why is she having a driving lesson at 15 years old with three other students in the back of the car with a driving instructor who seems like an absolute maniac? Because basically the quake hits, the driving instructor freaks out, takes control of the wheel and just starts driving like a lunatic uh, for his home or rather for a school to check that his wife's okay. Uh, really weird. He then dumps them one way or another, and so these kids have to get back. Now, there are four kids. Barbara, the daughter, Paul, uh, Pete, sorry, 
who's uh, the, the the good boy, and Barbara is, has a crush on him. Heather, this really stupid, obnoxious uh, girl, and Earl, stupid, obnoxious boy, who's also a psycho. And Lehman goes out of his way to say that these kids are not friends. They've just been thrown together by circumstance, the circumstance of a driving lesson. So given how much of a maniac and a loose cannon Earl is, you have to question why, why Barbara and Pete keep insisting on making him come along with them and checking that he's okay and all this stuff. I mean, they do dump him at one point, but they accept him back really soon. And Earl, I'm going to be spoiling stuff here, so, you know, turn off the video and rewatch it again when you've read the book, if you do plan to read it, but to be honest, I don't recommend you read it. Um... Earl is just murdering people summarily, just gets him hold of a gun and starts shooting people. And at the end of this strand of the book, you know, right at the end of the novel, when Lehman just desperately wanted to end this damn thing, he just had a, a Mexican, he just had a shootout between these three uh, kids, Barbara, Pete and Earl. He just had him shooting each other, uh, which came out of nowhere. But other than a desire on Layman's part to end this book because it was just going on and on and on. So yeah, the uh, that part of the story was annoying, but but by far the most irritating part of this book is the strand of the book concerning Clint, the husband. Now, Clint, early on, comes across this woman called Mary, and he convinces her to let him use her car. Mary is like a, I don't know, 30-something-year-old woman, businesswoman, but throughout the book, she behaves like an absolute child, and it's really odd. Like, Clint is constantly talking to her like a baby, saying, will you behave now? Do you promise to behave? You can come along with us. She's sulking, walking behind, uh, crying all the time like a child. And that would be bad enough if that wasn't juxtaposed by another character they come across called M, which is short for Emerald, who is a 13-year-old girl. If you know anything about Richard Lehman, you probably know where I'm going with this. 13-year-old girl, but she speaks like no 13-year-old has ever spoken. She's the most mature person in this book. The way that she speaks is several levels above how anyone else speaks. She's referencing classical literature. She's having observations which for, you know, if it, if it were an adult Richard Lehman character, you'd think, wow, this is odd for a Richard Lehman character. They don't usually have such elevated observations as this. Uh, but she is a 13-year-old girl. And Clint, who's the the worst character in this book, I don't know what we're meant to feel about him because his motivation is getting home to his wife and child. He's desperately afraid for the fate of his wife and kid. That's why he aggressively convinces Mary to let him take the car and drive home. But he's constantly having these very odd uh, internal monologues regarding M about his attraction to her and and stuff like that uh they're they're always having the he and m are having these conversations about how much they like each other at one point m kisses his hand uh which is placed over her mouth and that's kind of presented as being a sexually thrilling episode for him there's a very odd thing if i don't know if i can find it but somewhere Clint uh, observes that um, even if his wife and kid are dead, he may have found himself a ready-made replacement family in Marion and M. It's at the back somewhere. Well, yeah. And uh, along the way, you know, so that trio of uh, Clint, Mary and M, they come across other characters who are really annoying as well. Almost everyone in this book is annoying. There, there are no likable characters in this book. M would be a likable character if she wasn't so unbelievable. And Barbara would be a likable character, the daughter, if she wasn't constantly making the worst imaginable decision at any given time. So those are the characters. And it's why this book doesn't work. Because this kind of novel, like Stephen King's The Stand, it only works if you care about the characters, if you care about watching how they change and how they face the challenges this kind of catastrophe imposes on them, how they develop, how they analyze themselves and, you know, overcome their weaknesses and uncover their strengths. All of those things which are present in a work like The Stand are not here. And they were never likely to be here because none of that is in Lehman's wheelhouse. None of that is what he does. He doesn't do character arcs. He doesn't do character development. He does bad people doing bad things. And this does allow him to do lots of that. There are lots of examples of that happening. But I'm going to turn to that part of the book now. 
So on the back here it says that uh, the power lines are down and the emergency services can't cope. I'll have to take his word for that because there are no emergency services anywhere in this book. I can't believe a city like Los Angeles in 1995 wasn't in some way equipped for an earthquake, which wasn't all that bad. It's, it's destroyed a few buildings, but a lot is still standing. And then it says the evil and the lawless have already begun to comb the ruins. Uh, this book takes place, the whole thing takes place over the course of about four, five, six hours. But within that time, Lehman already has the residents of Los Angeles skinning people alive, scalping them, raping everybody, looting everything there is, pulling gold teeth out of jaws. Uh, he's got necrophilia going on. He's got obviously massive, massive, massive amounts of torture and kidnapping and uh, Layman's point in this book, which he directly states towards the end, is that within every person is, or almost every person, is a monster which, if you remove the restraints of society, will come out. Now, maybe that's true. You know, there's a famous line from uh, Alfred Henry Lewis from the, the early 20th century when he said something like, there are, there are only nine meals between mankind and anarchy. And that's that's been paraphrased a lot over the years. My my favorite version of it is someone who said mankind is only three missed meals away. A civilization is only three missed meals away from from anarchy. And the, the point being made there is that if you remove all of the constructs of society and see what happens to people. Well, we see in the news these days, don't we, with all the riots going on around, well, in America, of how people can sometimes become a tad... Uh, over exuberant if they think that the eye of the law is not upon them or if they think that no one's watching and there are it's a very interesting theme which has been done to death a lot of books and films have looked at that story at that uh, idea but I'll say again this whole book takes place over the course of four or five hours and I honestly don't believe that mankind will flip that soon <laughs> and I could understand if people would start you know maybe looting within a few hours, a bit of opportunism. But I don't think, as he depicts it, that there will be massive roving gangs of people who are going around scalping everyone and uh, skinning people. What on earth are they? Was, was every, is everyone in Los Angeles just waiting for the police to stop looking so they can go out and start skinning people and scalping them? And uh, where is everyone in this book? That's another question I have. It's like there are... Lehman says there are 12 million residents in LA and a few thousand of them have been killed by this thing. Where is everyone? Why are the only people on the streets lunatics and maniacs and psychos? Uh, aside from our little tiny band of teenagers on one side and Clint, Mary and M on the other side. So the whole thing is just pushes the, the bounds of, of uh, believability far too much. And it means that you don't, I at least don't get, didn't get invested in it in this. And it's something which is rare for a layman book. It was actually a bit boring. Um, I got through it fairly quickly. I did it in two, two sittings, but that's only because it is layman. And, you know, to be fair to it, to say one good thing about it, in a book of this size, this, for him, huge length, and because it is written by Richard Layman, there are always going to be episodes which are fun. He's never, Richard Lehman is never going to write an entirely boring and bad book. It's not in him to do that. There are some scenes in this which I enjoyed a lot. I liked one where Stanley dispatches this young guy who comes along to try to help Sheila. And uh, Stanley kind of lures him into a false sense of security to get rid of him. That was good. There's one scene where the kids hole up in an apartment away from what they think is a mob. And I, I liked that scene until it went bizarre with uh, characterization from Heather. And some of the some of the other scenes were fun, but on the whole, it's just a bit of a slug. And I thought it was going to be something more than this. I was looking forward to reading this one because I thought, you know, this was coming 1995. It was just after Lehman had written some of his greatest works like Darkness Tellers, Blood Games, Endless Night. Uh, and those were lengthy books, which he controlled very well. He paced very well. And I thought the you know, premise is really good. I thought maybe this would be a much richer book than it is. I thought there'd be a, a lot more characters than there are. I thought there'd be a lot more events going on. It, again, it's like an uneventful book. That third strand, which I despise with Clint, Mary and M. I guess in total, that whole thing comes to about 300 pages of the book. But I, I, most of it is just bickering. It's just just the same arguments over and over again. Pages and pages of Clint 
bickering with Mary and talking to her like she's a toddler and will you behave now um don't come in don't you walk behind us but you can't join us it's so stupid and it goes on and on and on so yeah I, I just expected so much more from this it's not his worst book because his worst books are the ones which are completely aimless and plotless uh, this isn't that there is kind of a story going on people need to get home that's what binds it all together but you know like at the end the very end of the book um layman wraps up this he explains what really happened by having barbara the daughter write a two-page essay for school about how i spent my summer and all the plot stuff is kind of wrapped up there and then in the final page there what you could honestly do if you just want to know what happens here is read the first two three chapters and then skip ahead to that to that section on page uh, 563 and just ignore the inter the this 500 pages in the middle because it will be in my opinion just a waste of time but that's just my opinion um a lot of people do like this book according to amazon reviews and so you know it is just all opinions and i've given you mine i found this to be too long a little bit too boring uh uneventful and just for this type of book the characters were not at all engaging it to spend 567 pages in their company was not fun for me so that's going to do it for quake from 1995 this by the way would be one of two very lengthy books he would publish in 1995 the other one is island so he really was churning out the pages at this time in his career but uh, anyway that's going to do it so thanks for watching this video everyone if you did watch it to this point and i will be back soon with another one take care of yourselves and bye for now